painting that's guarded its place on the wall for 26 years. In it, 14 gibbons swing playfully from branch to branch, carefree, exhilarated, almost alive. Sadly, there doesn't seem to be many admirers. The painting, stretching an entire wall, hangs almost unnoticed despite its size. The creator of this work is the late Chen Wenxi, renowned Chinese painter and arguably one of the best of his time. Yet the mastery of his strokes seems to melt into the wall. The year is 1977. Chen Wenxi has been commissioned by the CPF board for a large painting. The artist has spent three months working on it. But the work is not complete. The framing and transporting of such a huge painting is considerable work. And Chen Wenxi doesn't tolerate any slight glitches. finds its place on the wall and the artist can stand back and admire his work. Chen Wenzi is one of Singapore's first generation artists together with pioneers like Liu Kang and Georgette Chen. He was born in 1906 in a Shanto village in Guangdong province. It was a tiny village with a mere population of 300. The Chen family were small landowners. When Mrs. Chen was pregnant with Wenxi, magpies descended on their tangerine farm to build their nests. To the Chinese, this was an auspicious omen. Chen Wenxi once wrote. There were many farms in my village. Magpies and sparrows were a common sight. I was captivated by the sounds they made, the way they rushed for food, and the elegant sounds they made as they soared through the air. They soon became my best friends. Discarding more conventional methods, Chen Wen Si paints with his fingers, following the ancient art of his forefathers. Slender branches support birds or monkeys, and his pictures have a formal elegance so often found in historic Chinese scrolls. As shown in this 1960 newsreel, Chen Wen Si had another artistic so talent. Areas. He too has exhibited widely and has wide influence as a teacher of art. Art reviewer Tio Han Wee was especially mesmerized by Chen Wenxi's talent in finger painting. All inside already, you know. The, bigger, the former bigger. director of special projects at the National Arts Council was involved in the last big scale exhibition of Chen Wenxi's yeah. works in 1992. It was also at an art exhibition when he first witnessed the mastery yeah, so of this Chen Wen Si. This is almost abstract, yeah. right? He usually would come more alive when he talks about his art, uh, and uh, even more so when he uh, uh, did a demonstration of his, uh, of his art. Uh, I remember seeing him uh, doing a demonstration of his finger painting. He, he, he was a man of, of a considerable size. Uh, once he's, he got started doing that, you know, he, he came very much uh, alive and even agile. Chen Wenxi became one of the leading artists of finger painting. Now, 
Dr. Earl Lu was a young surgeon when he first started taking art lessons from Chen Wen-si. Today, the 75-year-old continues to paint vigorously at his clinic. Through the long decades of tutorship, Dr. Lu began to understand why his teacher and friend had little patience for anything else besides his one overriding love. I think in a sense, he didn't want to divert his energy from art. For instance, he was a very good calligrapher and he followed the style of one of the eight eccentrics of Yang Tzu. And I used to ask him, why don't you write more? He said, no, people will ask me to write. And I will spend too much time on calligraphy. I want to paint. He was very focused. Yeah, he was very focused. I think he was completely devoted to painting. Chen Wenzi was a firm believer in maintaining the highest standards in his works. In this 1977 documentary, he is seen burning some of the paintings that he found unsatisfactory. Dr. Earl Lu tells us with a knowing smile that the truth was less dramatic. Yet there were some things that remained true to the end in the artist's life. You never see when she actually do that. He just tear it up and throw it away. But if you leave poor paintings, your fame would suffer later on. He had achieved a lot as an artist and he knew it. He knew he was good. And he was very critical of other artists who don't come up to standard. And he said so uh, w without trying to be polite. I remember one Taiwan official brought his portfolio along and said, Dr. Chen, can you tell me what I can do to be a better? He said, Wen Ti Tai Do, Bu Neng Tan. He said, Too many problems we can't discuss. <laughs> and I agreed with him. No. This fellow was original but horrible. <laughs> but he was that straightforward even to a high official and rich man. Painting was his life. Uh, once I was in his house on a Sunday and his family was going to church. I asked him, uh, Dr. Chen, what, in what do you believe? He laughed and he said, I believe in painting. The art world of Shanghai in the late 20s and early 30s was in turmoil. This period saw the return of the first batch of art scholars from a Western education. However, the Western techniques did not sit well with traditional Chinese paintings and no one had the solution on how to integrate the two. But Chen Wenzi was to arrive at his own method. Chen Wenzi didn't appear to be very, very uh, bothered by all this debate. He just continued with his creation. He's created, uh, uh, he was like, I would like to use this example, he was like a, a person proficient in two or more languages. Um, he didn't see the need to mix the languages. Chen Wenxi had uh, absorbed, had taken all those sources uh, and reinvented, uh, reinterpreted, in a way that is highly individualistic, unique, uh, which, which uh, in, in, in the style that bears a, a distinctive stamp of its own. And that you see in Chen Wenxi's painting, whether in oil paintings or in 
brush painting. In a rare television interview, Chen Wenzi talks about his motivation for constant innovation. Johnny Quack has been collecting Chen Wenxi's work since the 70s. Interestingly, the businessman who travels frequently to China observes that Chen Wenxi's works are gaining increasing repute back in his country of origin. Chen 很有对自己那个，他能够祈祷你看那个中国画嘛，是慢慢你越觉得他有深度嘛，越觉得深度你就越会喜欢他。Johnny now owns more than 300 Chen Wenxi paintings, possibly one of the largest collections by a private collector. 一直说他应该画更好的，留下来更好的留下，他是很简单的。他当然他从来没有讲说他会要死的the last lesson I asked him to teach me was how to paint landscape because we never discussed that subject before. And he said, uh, well, when I get out of hospital, you come one day, I will get my staff to get my ink and colors ready and I will show you. And he, he did a few landscapes for me. He would go back to paint as long as he lived. Chen Wenzi died in 1991, leaving behind two unfinished works in his gallery. He was 85. In his lifetime, Chen Wenzi achieved many accolades from his adopted homeland. In 1964, he received the Public Service Star. In 1975, he was conferred honorary degree of Doctor of Letters. In 1992, his son, Dr. Chen Siu Min, received the Meritorious Service Award on his father's behalf. It was the first time an artist had been honoured posthumously. An artist's accomplishments may be summed up in various modes as an inspiration to future artists, as a visionary who presents his special view of beauty to the world. But at the end of the day, the artist understands that whatever legacy he leaves will be a bonus. For the life of an artist is essentially a lonely one, both in life and in death. A person aspiring to be an artist must be prepared for long and arduous labors and prolonged periods of solitude. There is no assurance that he will be successful, but it is also a rewarding task. In the satisfaction one derives from the fulfillment of a consuming passion for an art of beauty to which he dedicates himself, his whole life, all his efforts and endeavors. I think any good artist will leave something good behind. And his small paintings are gems, the little album leaves. I love them so much that I once told him I want to collect a hundred. Well, I collected up to about 80 when he died, but I've given most of them away. 
and I have only a small handful left. He was a good friend and I wanted his name spread. I wanted him to be known and I want all Singaporeans to know how lucky they are to have such a great artist in their midst. Twelve years after Chen Wenxi's death, are we to forget that a great artist once lived amongst us? Well, it seems not. After a steady march of people oblivious to the painting, finally and admirer materializes. <laughs> Vincent van Gogh once said this of his art. The emotions are sometimes so strong that I work without knowing it. The strokes come like speech. Chen Wenzi may have been a quiet, reticent man, but through his art, he spoke volumes.